So on January 31st, 2017, at about 1130, the Mammoth Police Department received a 911 phone call reporting shots fired in the area of the 400 block of Maine in Mammoth. Mammoth Police Department responded. They looked around for a potential suspect or a source of the gunfire, were unable to locate anything and left. About 45 minutes later, the Pinell County Sheriff's Office received a second phone call, this time from the Reynoso family, reporting that at their son's residence, their son being Mark Reynoso, that the bodies of both Mark and Maria de Santiago were, were located there and the, both bodies were deceased. Mammoth Police Department responded, secured the area, and Pinell County Sheriff's Office subsequently took over that investigation. The incident is a homicide. It is a double homicide. At this point in time, there, were, there are no suspects. There are investigative leads. The evidence at the scene is limited. We do have a possible suspect vehicle, and we do have some witnesses that we are following up with. There are a couple possible motives, but again, this is an active investigation, and we need the public's assistance to solve this, both for the family as well as for the peace of mind of the community. Joe and Lainey, would you be willing to talk about your relationship with Mark, who he is to you, and Ron? Mark's my son, mine and my wife. I mean, been with us forever it's kind of tore us up to lose him um, his birthday was June 11 first birthday we missed missed out not having him Father's Day was Sunday again missed him there also uh, been very tough for all of us not a day it goes a minute goes by when you think about him I got this picture in front of my house inside my house in front of the living room uh, it's no words just no words I don't know It's hard without him. He fixed everything around our house. He knew how to fix anything. He tore my washing machine apart because I had a leak. And there was a million screws on the dryer. And I don't know how he put it back together, but he did within a day and a half. I miss him so much. He was always at my house in the shop. And I still, to this day, when I drive in the yard, the first place I look. I miss him and Maria so much. She was, helps at the restaurant, La Casita and Mammoth. She was Joe's ma main man, woman. They were going to get married. They were engaged. And it's so hard. He lived next door to us, and he's not there anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. So would you be willing to talk about that day, what happened that day, how you learned about that? We all got together. It was on our day off at the restaurant. We uh, we all had breakfast together. Mark, Maria, Lainey, and I, my daughter and my son-in-law. They waited for me for at least a half an hour and a half before I got there. I had an appointment at the restaurant, so we all had breakfast. We're gonna do a job at the restaurant, so I was waiting for him to bring the hammer drill. And while I was doing something else, 
I got that done. He still hadn't been there, so I went to go check, you know, to go get it, my, do it myself, check on him. That's when I found both of them. I found them both under a tree where it all happened at. That was like about noon, right around there. And it was, it had just happened. It had just happened. waitress at the La Casita. I had to quit working. I started shaking really, really bad. I'm getting, I got really forgetful. It's been crazy. I just, I'm in La La Land all the time, numb, just kind of lost, floating in the clouds. It's hard. I miss them both very, very much. Very hard. It's hard to function. I had to quit my job. It's, I don't know. My grandson misses his dad so much. He talks about him. My granddaughter, she misses her Nino. My daughter's been a big help to both of us. She took care of everything for us when it happened. She's a very good daughter. And I know she misses her brother very much. They were very, very close. And I wish if anybody knows anything, they would come forward and help solve this case. Maybe give us some closure. We really need the closure really like to see somebody put away for this. It was such a brutal killing. Brutal. And to see them both laying there, gunshots, it was not easy. So there's a, approximately about a 45 minute time gap between the two. The first reported shots were right around 11 minutes, or rather 12 minutes after 11, and then this about 45 minutes later. I mean, this was basically mid morning. Correct. Again, it is a small town. There are people that heard the shots, but understand that in the location of where the actual crime scene occurred, there's a large shooting range, and gunshots in that area are heard hourly, daily. It's a common occurrence. Now, these were a lot closer to town. They were recognized by those that were closer to town, but not to the point of drawing any alarming situation. Plus, it's also a rural area. You do have a lot of hunting going on. Gunshots, again, it's a very common occurrence. It wasn't overly, well, overly alarming. But there was no uh, homeowners, no residents in the immediate area where they would have seen something to require these shots fired? There are some witnesses that I have spoken to that are able to give me a timeline for having heard the shots. The remoteness of the area, the brushing of, the brushiness of the area, because we do, it's a desert landscape area. This isn't a community town where everything is cookie cutter right on top of one another. Obviously, residences are widespread. I just don't have a real good clean line of sight for most of the people who did choose to call, come forward and, and, and assess the investigation. What we're going to do, if it's okay, is that we want to just focus actually on the family and their loss. Lane, you can talk a little bit about how your life changed. You can talk about what message would you have to somebody who knows something and hasn't come forward? 
just wish they would come forward if they know anything. I mean, it's right off of Main Street. The house is, there's a Main Street going downtown into town, and the house is right there. My sister-in-law lives a little bit away from there, and she said she heard the gunshots. Um, another, uh, my husband's ex-wife, aunt saw a car there and when she went by she said it's a habit for her to look at the house and she saw a car there and she, I don't know if she talked to him and gave him a description of the car but um, it's just kind of odd that you know it was just right after we all got home my daughter lives right next up the street. I, he lives right next door, and I live. We live like in a triangle, and she probably heard the shots too, but she didn't know until he went and told her. Joe went and told her, and quite a few people heard the shots, and some people up on the hill saw a car driving away, but that's all we have. Well, if anybody's out there and does have information, it would help us a lot. It would help everybody in, in our community. Um, there's no words to say how tough it's been unless you've been through it. And God hoping nobody has to go through this. Uh, it'll, it'll never go away. Never. We, we there in Mammoth, it's a small community, and there's a lot. Everybody's friends there, and everybody's hurt through this. Everybody's come forward and helped us out, made donations. That's what this is about today. I mean, bringing up this reward, and hopefully something can get done with this, you know, and somebody will come through with this. I mean, the community's all hurt. The big scar to everybody there. Big scar. I think somebody may want something. They're just afraid to come forward. I believe so. Kind of the value of having a silent witness program. Yeah. That's that's the good thing about the the silent witnessing. Maybe they they will come out and help us out. You know, I mean. Silent witness, silent witness. Hopefully, it does help us out. It's exactly why we're here. Did you want to tell this person you did this anything? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing nice. <laughs> I mean, wow. Why? I'd want to know why. Why they did it. Were they paid? You know, why? The main question there is why? You suspect it's a forget? It's a possibility. Why? <laughs> exactly. Well, two years ago, Mark was in a bad accident. There was, there was a head-on collision, and Three people were deceased in that collision. And it all happened on his side of the lane. Uh, that's all we could take. We could take it from there, and that's it. Do you think the possibility of somebody took advantage of the fact that there was that shooting range nearby and thought maybe that's a perfect place to shot to be covered up? Well, yes and no, but, well, the shooting range is about a quarter mile away, I would say, on the other side of the riverbed, which the investigator said that there, like you said, there is a lot of shooting daily over there, you know. This is right in town. It's not 
like it was out of town. But you do hear shots all day long. And nothing can bring them back, but the main thing makes it better. Well. If this case could be solved, yes, it would make it, I don't know how much better, but it's, they'll never be back, just like you said. We just could take this a day at a time and try to keep ourselves busy, keep our heads, keep our heads straight. That's, that's all we can do. I just hope somebody will come around Try to, then we could take it from there and see how things go after that. It's, it's very tough, very, very tough. Not just for my wife and I, but I have a big family and everybody, current family, everybody, everybody around. I still, the whole town. I got people still coming, giving me condolences still all day long, a lot. Maria has Maria has three three boys and it's really tore them up. It really tore them up. They were very close to us. They they were walking distance from our house and they were at our house all the time. Mark's son was at our house all the time. Now we got four boys out there. They all kind of got split up, you know. But my grandson still comes around quite a, a lot. Maria's boys I see them every once in a while here and there but it's it's very hurting for them three boys themselves one of the boys I want to say he's three years old you know the youngest of them all the oldest I believe he was uh, 11 years old and then the middle one right there I, I just split them all apart it's very hurting for them they still come and ask that they could come to the house and play anytime. <laughs> yeah. It's just not the same without Mark and Maria there for them, but they got to keep going. We all do. Where do you get your strength from? Work. Keep myself busy every day. All day. Thank you for saying that. Thank I forgot you. about that. Oh, no worries. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody, for everything. Thank you. I hope it helps.